into it. So we're going to finalize the estimate, creating the sales order. And then from the sales order, we're going to connect to the receive payment. However, when we go to the receive payment, we're then going to turn on the prepayment feature so that we end up with a positive liability instead of a negative receivable. All right, let's do it. Customers, let's go into the estimate and we're gonna create a sales order. This is a sales order. So, so uh, the estimate has been copied to the sales order. Good, that looks good. It's telling us we don't have any inventory on hand, which is fine because we're gonna use this simply to uh, request and then we'll use this the sales order to uh, to make the bill at a future point as well because we're gonna have to do the custom order from the from the vendor for this particular customer that wants this kind of airbrush or whatever so then it says you can tell QuickBooks to block any transactions that would result in a negative okay so let's re let's do it duh, 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 duh. this is gonna be as of 060127 let's say 06 602 just so we can have a different one day up and da, 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 so everything looks good this is pulling in we have the same kind of numbers down here but like with the estimate nothing new was really happening in terms of the financial statements no journal entry right same thing sales order no journal entry happening internal document if i save it and close it we can see then we have the estimate, we get the sales order from an internal perspective. We could now say the sales order is locked in. I'm then going to collect or get the prepayment if that's applicable, or we would continue on doing the job or whatever we're going to do from here. In, in our case, we want to collect the deposit from the customer. So we're going to go into here and I'm going to go to the receive payment to connect it. Now, when I do that, it says receive customer payment on sales orders. You can now receive prepayments from your customers and add them to your current liability account. All you need to do is go to preferences and select prepayment settings. So we could go there directly from here. And that takes us to the prepayments company preferences. If you didn't get that pop up for whatever reason and you or you just want to go there directly, edit drop down preferences and then payments on the left, you want the company preferences as opposed to the my preferences. If you don't have the prepayments thing on the right hand side, you might not have the latest version or the enterprise version. They might roll this out, you would think possibly to, to all the desktop versions, but uh, if you don't have it, you won't see this thing on the right, right? So if you do, then you got the prepayments over here. So we'll select that, we're gonna turn on the prepayments. And then it says select a current liability account to record your pre prepayments as a liability. Has to be a liability account because that's the point. We're collecting something before we earn the revenue. We don't want to record it as revenue. We don't want to record it as a negative receivable. We want to record it as a liability, usually a current liability. So if I select the drop down, let's add a new account and I'm just going to call it customer deposit. Notice the default is as a current liability type of account. We could call it unearned revenue, which I might change to and do next time because I think that's more appropriate in a, in a subscription model situation. Customer deposit seems appropriate in this situation when we're getting an advanced deposit on the work that we're going to basically complete later. So I'm going to keep it at that, save it. Uh, the name exists because I was messing with it before. I'll put a dot next to it. And I'm gonna say, okay, let's do it. So there it is. And then it's gonna close all the windows, I think, which is annoying. Yeah, quick, it's gonna, oh man, QuickBooks. Now you're gonna make me open it. Okay, whatever. Let's go to the reports and open up all the stuff again. Balance sheet, company financial balance sheet, customize, going from 0101271231127, fonts and the numbers changing it to 14 is that okay it is fine then okay maximize reports drop down company and financial profit and loss change in the range 0101272063027 and oh no yeah that's right and then i want to go from total to months and then go to the customize fonts and numbers and change it to 14 2. okay yes okay and then company drop down let's open that home page back up 
All right, and so there's our home page. So now we went from the estimate to the sales order, and now we're trying to create a receive payment, but we didn't finish it yet because we had to turn on the prepayment, and now we have a liability account to post it to instead of a negative accounts receivable. So let's go back to the customer center. Customer center, they're hanging out over there by the water cooler, the customers are. They're just chilling. So we're gonna go over here and we're gonna say, let's go into the sales order again. And let's say we're gonna receive a payment. So now it says you won't be able to make any changes to this prepayment once you apply it to an invoice. So be careful if you need to change it, then you're gonna to have to actually delete it. I think you can still, I believe, delete it if you needed to and then do it again. But uh, you can't just adjust it. So you have to be, you know, be careful, be careful. So now this form looks like the other receive payment form, but now it has this prepayment thing on it. So what does a, a, the form usually do when you have a receive payment or customer payment form? It usually decreases accounts receivable. That's what we know that form always does. This one, however, does not because it's marked with the prepayment. And that means it's going to hit the liability account that we selected, which is the customer deposit. Note down here, too, that under the last method that we used, we didn't have anything down here. And therefore, when I selected like a $50 deposit, there was nothing to apply it to because we didn't have an invoice. We still don't have an invoice. What we do have is a sales order. You don't usually apply a payment to a sales order because the sales order is an internal document. But QuickBooks is using that sales order kind of like it's an invoice so that we can apply the payment out to the sales order here. So that's kind of how it's how it's working. If I go back to my my uh, worksheet on the on this side, I can say, OK, this time we have a receive payment form. And what's happening with the receive payment? Well, cash is going to go up because we're getting a deposit. And I created this other account called customer deposit now. So now we have this customer deposit account that I have added now. Uh, and that's going to be 50 and negative 50. So if I post that, cash is going to go up by 50 this time, which is right. And then here's the key. The customer deposit is going to go up. The customer deposit is not revenue because even though we got cash, we haven't yet earned it. And it's also not a negative receivable because we don't want it because it should be a liability. We owe the money back to the customer at this point in time, or we owe the customer the work. Under the old method, it was a negative uh, receivable. That was kind of the, the glitch in the system, even though it